on to the next panel. The topic for the next panel discussion is ways to make your communication skills more powerful and effective when dealing with stakeholders. And with a huge round of applause, please welcome our panelists, Professor Surbi Daya, Professor, Department of Journalism, IAMC, our Ambassador, IIMC. Thank you. Thank you, two people. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we are celebrating a cause here. Can we get a round of applause for all our panelists who have taken out time from their schedules to grace the occasion and share their insights with us. With the same, let's welcome our next panelist, Anshu Khanna, owner Good Word Media. Please welcome Seema Ahuja, SVP and Global Head of Communications and Corporate Brand, Biocon Group and Biocon Biologics. And unfortunately, our fourth panelist, Mr. Ajay Maharaj, is stuck in the traffic and we shall leave a chair for the gentleman. He shall be reaching in a couple of minutes and we'll make sure that he is a part of this panel anyhow. And with the same, let's welcome the moderator for the session, Ruchika Jha, Exchange for Media. A very good afternoon to the panelists and everybody present here. It is indeed a privilege for me to have, to moderate this session and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the veterans of the PR and corporate communications industry. Before I begin, I would like to Before I begin, I would like to give just a brief introduction of our panelists. We have Dr. Surbi Dahiya, who is the professor of Department of Journalism at the Indian Institute of Mass Communication, New Delhi. She has over 20 years of experience in the media industry. She began her career as a correspondent with the National Daily before moving to the academics. Next, we have Ms. Anshu Khanna, the owner of Goodwood Media Services. She has over 30 years of experience in the media and PR industry. Next, we also have Ms. Seema Ahuja, who is the Senior Vice President and Global Head of Communications and Corporate Brand of Biocon Group and Biocon Biologics. Ms. Ahuja has 30 years, over 30 years of experience in the public relations and corporate communications industry and now we have Mr. Ajay Maharaj, who is the group head, corporate communications and public relations at Fortis Healthcare. He has over 20 years of experience in the corporate communication industry. Welcome panelists. So to begin with, since the stakeholders are one of the important part as we know that the stakeholders are one of the important part of the both the PR and Copcom industry. My first question for the panelists goes, what are some of the ways that one can implement on their communication skills to make them more powerful and effective while dealing with them? Ms. Uh, Dr. Daya, if I can start with you. Yeah, so very good morning to all of you. And we are here to discuss the communication importance and the you know, ways in which we can improve how to communicate, especially with the stakeholders. Uh, so I would like to begin by saying that uh, the, the meaning of the message is not necessarily contained in the message itself. It is actually the result and the negotiation between the receiver and the message. That means, you know, when the sender is sending the message, sender could be anybody, a PR professional or an advertiser, or, you know, when the sender is sending the message, he or she should be very, very clear what he or she wants to convey. And communication basically means 
reaching a common goal of understanding. So effective communication will be in a situation when whatever the, whatever the sender wants to communicate, the receiver receives it in the intended message. So when we say this ad is very effective or this PR uh, strategy is very effective, it is especially in the cases when the communicator understands what are the objectives of those uh, people for, for whom you are you know, writing the, that PR strategy. What is the objective? You, you have to do the whole groundwork, the whole research work. What is the life cycle of that industry? Whether it is in the initial stage or in the developing stage or at the peak, or it is in the declining stage. So if you understand all the nuances, then communication will certainly be better. And remember that all the stakeholders, whether it is you know, the internal stakeholders or external stakeholders, whether they are employees, employees are all your you know, brand ambassadors, whether they are external stakeholders, anybody who is an investor, Effective communication with stakeholders will, will come with all the important C's as you know, C for communication, C is the word that we have lot of words that are connected, uh, you know, with effective communication, like your communication should always be clear. Clarity is very, very important. If you're clear in your message, effective communication. If you know what is the content what content is the right content that I have to deliver? Effective communication. Right context is also very important. Your communication should be, should be complete. Then it makes your communication effective with all the stakeholders. It should be correct. C for correct. So there are a lot of, lot of words. You, you know, communication has to be consistent. It is not a one time or a one way, you know, process. Communication is a two way process. So you have to be consistent in saying what you are saying. You know, that gives you an, a, a hammering effect also. Why do the advertisements keep on repeating the advertisements or the promos? That's, an, that's a hammering effect. So you have to be consistent in your message. You have to be coherent. Again, another C. Be courteous, you have to be concrete, you have to be concise. So you can pick up the dictionary, find all the C's and all of them are you know, related to effective communication. So the more you communicate towards reaching a common goal of understanding, the more the stakeholders will appreciate your communication skills. Thank you, Dr. Daya. Uh, Ms. Khanna, if we could have your views on the same, please. So listen, um, I'm basically a journalist who strayed into PR 30 years back. For the last 30 years, I've just been promoting what I call hearts. You know, um, I, I'm promoting words that pour out of hearts. So authors, art which pours out of a heart because it's uh, painters. I'm working with musicians. I'm working with craftspeople. So I don't know too much of technology or technique and brands. Brands which are actually in the luxury lifestyle and culture base. Basically, I like to work with brands which were born in India, uh, you know, and that's what uh, gets me very happy. So I'll put it very simply, you know, we after a while become like doctors, you know. So a stakeholder comes to you and he wants a prescription. So like a doctor checks your pulse and says, okay, I think you've got fever. So will you do this test? And we, so you have to understand the core of the brand. You have to understand what your stakeholder wants to communicate and then simply put it together in a very holistic and honest and extremely creative strategy. Because I'm not saying that you don't need creativity in managing bio corner or hospital, you need as much, but you have to really think I don't even know where that box is, which people keeps talking about, we keep talking about out of the box, but I guess you have to go beyond the brief and think and put your heart and soul into it. And that is what communication is. 
we are all communicators. We have to first communicate within and you will find all the answers there and then you'll be able to communicate outside and your stakeholder create a strategy. Please do not cut and paste ever because that's very, very, uh, you know, it's, it's become the norm. You pick up some strategy points from somewhere, put them somewhere else, think from the heart and create a strategy which is totally custom created. And that is what the stakeholder wants to know. And that's how you communicate with the stakeholder. Ms. Auja. Thanks. First of all, a very good morning to everyone. And uh, let me uh, use this occasion to wish you all a very festive Diwali week. I know it's Dhanteras today. And uh, when I landed in Delhi, I suddenly realized I'm in Bangalore now for the last 12 years. And I had kind of lost uh, touch with uh, what the Indian, uh, North Indian festivals are like. So thank you very much for being here for this event on Adhan Terrace. Then all of you should be buying silver and getting the, ready for the Lakshmi Puja. So uh, coming to your question, Ruchika, um, I would like to take a step back first. And I would say, why do we really need to have effective communication with stakeholders? So what is it that we are really looking at? So uh, for me, it's the principle of fours that works. And I believe the uh, first objective of effective uh, you know, stakeholder communication is to build trust. That's what we are looking at, which is why we need to communicate effectively with them. Uh, second is how do we really uh, strengthen the connect that we have with the various stakeholder groups? And this I'm talking about both external and internal. And third, which many of us as communications heads would know that we deal with it all the time, is how do you really mitigate the risk by developing better relationships with our stakeholders. And you use them when you need them the most. So how do you really help them during, you know, take their help during crisis management? So if these are the four core objectives for which we need to really have, uh, you know, uh, very effective communication with the stakeholders, then there are another four which, uh, factors which are very, very important. And the first part is the uh, time of response. I think as a brand, it is very important that we uh, have timely communication or timely engagement with our stakeholders. Second piece is in terms of content that Dr. Daya spoke about, how genuine and authentic is your content? And third and more importantly is how rich is your content and what is the frequency at which you are sharing the content or you're engaging with your stakeholders? And last but not the least, is what is the impact that your communication is making? So these are four plus four kind of a principle is something very, very important that we as communicators need to be very mindful on a day-to-day -day basis. And it doesn't matter how many years you spend in the profession. I think every day we are learning new lessons and uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm here. Um, I'll go around and I'll come to the next question. Thank you, Ms. Aoja. Mr. Maharaj, if you could elaborate. Hi. Hello. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. So I think uh, the distinguished panel has covered almost everything. Uh, from my end, I can say that uh, we can bifurcate this communication into two parts, which is internal and external. And it's very important to have a context along with the content. So that's going to be very important. What are the stakeholders? What is the requirement? It's not one size fits all strategy, which you have to adopt. Maybe something is successful somewhere else. It won't be good for you. So you have to, like uh, it has been mentioned by SEMA also, we have to customize our strategy according to the situation, according to the demand, according to the uh, whatever the vision or maybe what they want to achieve out of it. So it's critical, like uh, I'm in healthcare and what the crisis, what we've been through. So we have to change our strategy almost every day because the media kept on changing and almost all the journalists were reporting health at a time. So that's the power of communication. Like if everybody, all of you must be aware that you have to mask, you have to uh, use a sanitizer or you have to maintain social distancing, how it happened. That's the effect of media and maybe the communication, what we did. So it was very dynamic in a way. The things are very dynamic. The, the, the mediums have changed now. So we have to adopt accordingly and whatever new mediums are coming in, we can't just say that we have 25, 30 years of experience. So whatever we do is perfect, maybe it's not right. So we have to look at the change. We have to adopt and accordingly customize our strategy so that we are able to cater to the different audience. Like today, the audience is very different. The teenagers are stuck onto some different social media platforms. 
from where they uh, get their uh, all the news or whatever uh, kind of information they require. And for the and another segment is for the corporate, they have different sort of in, uh, category or maybe the channels from where they want to adopt to their, their communication or whatever the news they want to look at. And then we have the senior citizens also like for the healthcare, our senior citizens are there who have to connect and they have their own uh, habits uh, when they want to connect through that kind of stuff. So we have to customize accordingly, look at the kind of audience, what we're looking at, and that's the strategy has to be done. So I think we have to look at that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Maharaj. So we talked about how to make our communication skills more effective and powerful. Now coming to the next question is that how crucial it is to be aware of the stakeholders' vision and goals before engaging in communication with them. Ms. Auja, I would like to start with you. Um, thank you, Richika. That's a very, very relevant question. I think it is extremely important that uh, we have a shared purpose and a shared vision. Because if we don't really understand where, uh, you know, uh, what is it that our stakeholders are expecting and what is it that they hear, want to hear from us as a brand, it will be um, more like, a, you know, broadcast. You are just informing them, but the, the, the message is not really getting absorbed and not getting received. So it's extremely important that you understand your stakeholders. And as Ajay said that, you know, we have diverse stakeholders and the need of each of these stakeholders is different. So it's important to understand where they're coming from and what is it that they would want to hear from you. And then it's not about just customizing the messaging, but even the format that we choose needs to be aligned with the stakeholder group. And if I give you an example, for example, and this is for the uh, internal stakeholders, right? Uh, we all uh, manage various uh, projects and most of the communication uh, initiatives have, always have to have a cross-functional team involved. So as project managers, it's very important for us to understand what is in it for these stake various stakeholder groups that we are engaging with. Let's say HR, let's say supply chain, let's say finance. So if there is a uh, you know, communication initiative that you want to roll out and you're working with them, how do you really get them to, uh, you know, be a part of that and give their 100%? So to get their commitment is important to ensure that they see what is it in it for them. How that campaign or how that initiative is really going to help them in achieving their goals. So to your question, it's important that we understand stakeholder expectations and accordingly build a way to engage with them, build the communication messaging accordingly so that we are able to create an impact that that stakeholder is expecting. Yeah, thank, you. thank you, Ms. Saoja. Ms. Khanna. So uh, Seema has a very important stakeholder. She's such a face for the industry. So that must be also very consuming for you. Yeah. So, you know, stakeholders, basically, I feel that uh, PR is one place where you can't sell, even if you're a great marketing person, you can't sell a fridge to an Eskimo. So stakeholders, yeah, I'd like to extend a lot of us forget that one of our biggest stakeholders is the media and people don't spend time understanding the pulse of the media. What is it that a magazine or a newspaper is saying? What is their editorial stand? who's writing on what, because, you know, having worked as a journalist, I face that very often that the order story comes to you and then you just waste your effort. So stakeholders will extend e even to the media. You have to understand they are your most important stakeholders outside. But when you look inside, if you're dealing with a client, now I'm talking from an ad agency point of view. So at any point of time, you are talking to 15 different kinds of businesses. So you have to understand the one question you always like to ask is where do you see yourself 10 years from now, five years from now? You know, what is it that you want? And you have to custom create your strategy according to their needs and their vision. You can't go outside of that ever. That's what, uh, you know, talking to your stakeholders is all about. Thank you, Ms. Khanna. Uh, Dr. Daya. Uh, so when we talk about vision and mission of any organization, rather, I would like to call it, uh, you know, collectively as strategic intent enunciation. So when you talk about strategic intent enunciation, that includes all your vision, mission, goals, strategies, objectives, everything. So 
you know it is very 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 important for all the pre uh, you know professionals to understand the strategic intent of the company that they are working for or you know they are making strategies for because that is the underlining factor where you are going to build your strategy on because vision and mission are changing maybe every 5 years or every you know 10 years or maybe one year or two years depending on the size of the company i have just uh, you know completed two books and uh, they are in the market now uh, one is i did a case study on the z group which is called as uh, the house that z built wherein i did a case study on the z group and the other book is indian media giants which is a 1000 page book on the indian media industry the times group the hindustan times group the hindu indian express bhaskar jagran uh, that's published by oxford university press it just got released last month so what i studied was that one of the parameters of study was that how the vision and the mission and the strategic intent is changing for that industry after every 3 years or 5 years or you know 7 years so all the other factors whether it is the tagline or the punchline or it is the highest strategy it all depends on the vision of the company so the pr professionals should be well versed with where as i just said i'm repeating it where that company stands whether it's in the initial stage or in the developing stage or on, on the peak so vision and mission will also change for example you you are opening a new college so your vision is different and after 20 years you've reached the peak and you are the number one college in india so your vision is different same stands for exchange for media when they started in 2000 or 2004 the vision was absolutely different today the vision is absolutely different so you have to work on those changing missions and visions only then the communication will be effective now the second thing that i want to talk here about is that you know to make communication understanding communication in an easier manner is uh, to divide it into three stages you can apply it this formula everywhere and anywhere so uh, when you talk about three stages the first stage is horizontal the second stage is vertical the third stage is again horizontal so what is in the first stage for example i am speaking and you are listening so this is the horizontal stage that means when you try and understand the company and the company professional is briefing you everything that is the horizontal stage where you are taking all the information that the company professional is giving you right so second stage is the vertical stage vertical stage is intrapersonal communication now what have you understood out of what the company professional briefed you that is your intrapersonally you know happening the vertical stage now what you have understood only that you can communicate that again is the third stage that is the horizontal stage so whatever you have understood you are the biggest stakeholder for them too because what you have understood you are going to communicate in the same manner you might have understood 90% you might have understood only 10% so whatever the second stage whatever you've grabbed inside you the third stage will be completely dependent on that your analysis your interpretations everything comes in and here you know individual differences also creep in because all of us are different we are all different individuals we all have different personality we all have different names different castes different regions we come from different states we come from different parenting from different schooling from different cultures so this is due to selective exposure we are exposed selectively to you know different cultures so that makes our perception also selective you know nothing is right or wrong it's just the perception same thing can be right for me wrong for her or right for her wrong for me so it depends on your selective exposure selective perception as well as selective retention how many of you know all the 40 students of class 10th you must be remembering i think 7 8 9 10 maximum that's your selective retention so when after the first horizontal stage when you uh, 
uh, you know, speak to yourself, interpret things, perceive things, understand things intrapersonally. What retains with you comes out in the third stage. And that is the stage where you have to remember the vision and mission and the strategic intent of the company. And therefore, sync those messages, sync that communication, sync those objectives with your communication, which is the best ad. If you have made that ad, if you have created that message of the ad or the PR strategy in sync with the objective and the vision and the mission of the company, the ad will be effective, most effective, hence effective communication. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Daya. That was a wonderful example. Mr. Maharaj. I'm the last one, so I get least to speak and least to talk about it anyway. Uh, I think uh, when we talk about the vision and mission, and if you are aware as a, if you're part of a communication or PR team, if you're aware about the fact that this is the vision of an organization, that makes a life easier. And this gives you a strategic direction, how do you want to place your strategy, who are the prospective stakeholder, what company wants to achieve in the next three to four to five years, whatever they have, like for like Tata is leadership with trust. So the trust is a factor which everybody connects with. That's what Tata stands for. Or four is like uh, saving and enriching life, and maybe we have a vision to patient care and clinical excellence. So that's what we know that uh, what we are supposed to do. So it makes our life easier and also tough also because we have to strategize accordingly. We have to have a strategy in place. How do we connect with the audience? How do we connect with our patient? How do we connect with our shareholders and other people who look at the brand? So it's very important to have a vision mission. And for us as a communicator, we should be aware about it. And that will help us in guiding a good strategy, a good plan in place. So I think it's a critical and very important part of, uh, for an organization as far as the PR person also. Thank you, Mr. Maharaj. Uh, we are running out of time. So I'll quickly jump to the concluding question that in the digital world, uh, first world, which medium of communication, according to you, can yield maximum number of results? Mr. Maharaj, I would like to start with you. In the world, which which medium of medium communication do you feel will yes. yield optimum results or maximum results? I think uh, to comment about one specific kind of a tool or maybe a platform in the digital world is going to be very tough because uh, a different set of audiences there on different kind of platforms what we have in place now like Twitter has a different kind of following. The messaging is crisp and clear and it's pretty short. And again, you have LinkedIn, that's a separate kind of a tool where we talk more about the professionals and what's happening and you have more detailed information. Then we have our YouTube and other platforms which are there and Facebook also plays a critical role. So it's important to identify what our actual messaging is. So I'll just, instead of talking, I'll just give you one or two examples what I'll talk about. It's like we used to have our uh, in-house letter which used to print 5,000, 6,000 copies and used to go across across uh, Fortis India in different part locations. So later on, we switched it to, I became a digital newsletter. So it became digital and it was a, it was a, a digital copy. And now recently I have launched an audio visual bulletin which, uh, which we launched last month itself. So that connect is very different because the, I think the span of people attention is getting less and they want to look at it in a crisp and a very clear format. And AV is something which people prefer. The earlier the town hall used to happen, people used to travel, but now things are digital now. So everybody can connect from any part of the world and people like what pandemic and what COVID has taught us, like how good we can connect from the different platform, all the conferences, whatever we're attending today, in person over here, what did you, uh, last year was on, on social, on different platform, what we had from the online perspective. So that is important. And I think all the channels are going to be important uh, and whatever clicks as a brand, how well you connect, uh, that's going to matter a lot. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Maharaj. Dr. Daya, your views. Uh, so uh, when we talk about the digital era or otherwise, I remember uh, Marshall McLuhan had once said that medium is the message. So medium is very, very important in the chain of, you know, sender, message, channel and receiver. Medium is very, very important. But at the same time, uh, as she has asked, which medium is the most effective? Just ask a question to yourself. What came first? 
relationship or communication? What came first? Any answers? Communication? Anybody else? Think. Now we have different views here. So it's just like chicken and egg, you know. Uh, both of them go hand in hand. Without relationships, there are no communications. And without communication, there's no relationship. If PR professionals understand this, then the communication will be most effective. May, you know, I would say intrapersonal communication is the most effective or interpersonal communication, sorry. Interpersonal communication is when two people are meeting and they're talking face to face and you're not know, becoming friends and everything. But when we talk about different mediums, suppose something is printed in the newspaper. So that's mass medium, right? It, it's one way sort of. You, you can't respond to everything except letter to the editor or something is broadcasted or aired, right? So communication is reaching the common goal of understanding. So as far as you can use a medium where you can make the uh, you know, other person understand what you want to convey, that medium is the most effective. So uh, medium is the message, whatever, in whichever way you communicate. Earlier, the communication was, you know, uh, say one way. Then, uh, I mean, only two ways. But now in the digital era, what has happened? Digital or online platforms have given the ability to communicate in all the mediums in the sense that uh, you can have a one-to-one -one chat on WhatsApp. You can have a group chat on WhatsApp. You make a group. Uh, so group communication is also there. Interpersonal communication is also there. You write a news on Twitter or you break a news on Twitter or Facebook or anywhere, Insta. That's mass communication, right? So communication has taken a U-turn here with the digital medium. And it provides you a capac capacity of using all the mediums, basically. So uh, as PR professionals, we should understand only one uh, line that communication and relationship both go hand in hand. Now, if two brothers stop talking, the relationship comes to an end, maybe after five years or 10 years, if they have not spoken, what is the relationship left? And similarly, you're talking to a stranger, you become friends, maybe you, you know, uh, marry each other. So that's the beginning of a relationship. So similarly, with all the companies that you're working for, with, for all the organizations that you are working for, PR's basic definition is to establish and maintain relationships, building relationships, building trust, and it all comes from communication. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Daya. Ms. Khanna. Okay, so we are talking about a women's summit. So before I start talking about uh, social media, I'd like to say that whatever you're creating, content is not king, it's queen. Content is queen. You know, you have to, it doesn't matter. You know, I have a huge issue with just people standing there and pouting, say something. You know, today, slowly, slowly, the via media, which you would talk to is kind of uh, almost equally important as you talking directly to your stakeholders. So if you want to talk to an older lot, you talk through Facebook. If you want to say something, you talk through Twitter. If you want to create something beautiful, you go on to Instagram. If you have an article to write, you go to LinkedIn. But what is that one thing that binds all of it? Content. So today at the Women's Summit, I'll say that content is queen. Thank you, Ms. Kanda. Ms. Aouja. Yeah, well said, Anshu. So uh, let me um, again take a step back. So before we really pick and choose which is the digital communication channel, which is the best, I think what is important to understand what is the objective of our communication? What is the end result that we're looking at? Are we wanting to just inform our people? Are we wanting to engage with them? Are we wanting to take feedback from them? 
So a lot depends on what is the intent of that communication that you want to do. I'll give you an example. I mean, um, uh, if, if you know, initially uh, comms people used to only, you know, uh, focus on broadcast media, right? And broadcast media, uh, I'm not talking about television, I've got anchor sitting here. But what I mean is the webcast and the emails, which is essentially a one way communication, right? You have a corporate message, you have a business update, and you want to communicate it to people. So what you do, you do a press release and you send it out. You make an email and you send it out. So what are we doing here? Here, our objective is only to make sure that we push the communication out. Right. Then we moved to pull communication. And what did that lead to? We stopped sending emails, but we started hosting all of this on intranet, on website. And we expected that people who are interested in our brand and our brand stories will visit these platforms and consume the content. Right. But uh, is, is push better or pull better? Well, both of them address a particular need. So at this point in time, nothing is good, nothing is bad, but everything is addressing a need which is, exists in the marketplace. Moving on to the digital era that we are in, and what we have seen is that uh, stakeholder communication is all about being interactive, engaging with each other, uh, you know, taking each other's views, and respecting each other's views, sharing of opinions. So if this is what we have to do, then we need a wide array of uh, digital mediums and social media is definitely one of them. But do we have other mediums? Yes, we have. I mean, if you look at uh, the uh, last three years of COVID, if you've seen, we've so well adapted the virtual world. I mean, I remember when we used to do these media interviews and Aarti is sitting here, she will agree. Uh, every time it had to be their OB-WAN coming to our offices, right? But today, where are those OB-WANs? They are not required. We all are doing these broadcasts uh, through Zoom uh, channel. So it's no longer just, uh, you know, recording a message and sending it as a video release, but we are actually engaging. It's a two-way communication that we are doing. Similarly, if you look at other channels like Twitter, we spoke about, we spoke about uh, Facebook, etc. So these are all channels which allow you to engage with people as a group. We build communities, we, um, we offer our support to each other, and especially during the COVID times, if you know. I think all these social media channels fulfilled a very big need where all of us were at home feeling lonely and you know, getting to various kind of mental health. It is these digital and social media platforms that came to our rescue. So each channel has a role to play, each communication medium has a role to play. It depends on us as professionals professionals, how do we use those channels? I mean, I'll give you another example. Uh, ever since the digital world has come in, now we have started engaging with our people through various kinds of surveys and feedbacks and all of that. So what is the intent there? The intent there is to understand your stakeholder. What, what is their expectation? You know, you as a brand are you know, engaging with media, you're engaging with your internal employees, but are you really telling the story that they want to hear? How do they perceive you? So are you really going back, taking the feedback, understanding how they perceive you, and then working out a story where you want to convey your message and you want to give your brand story? So I would only suggest that uh, don't write off any of the medium. Just evaluate each of the channels that are available to us, whether it is one way, two way, horizontal, vertical, uh, whichever way, uh, we must use it, we must, understand the medium and what impact it can make in our communication strategy and use it accordingly. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ahuja. And thank you to all the panelists for taking out time from your busy schedule and coming here. I really enjoyed the session. And thank you so much. Thank you, Ruchika. Thank you so much.